In fishing communities across Scotland, there's mounting frustration and anger over the SNP Greek government's plan to introduce highly protected marine areas. The idea is that HPMAs are needed to restore and protect biodiversity in the nation's waters. But if they go ahead, ministers are being warned there will be devastating consequences for coastal livelihoods. Well, STV's political correspondent Ewan Petrie travelled to Argyll to hear some of the concerns of fishermen. In the Argyll village of Tevialloch, fishing has long been more than just a job. If HPMAs come out or tear communities apart, there won't be enough structure left and enough financial input to make these, these, these communities function. And that, that really gets me here in the heart, really. It's the last thing you think about before you go to sleep at night, and it's the first thing you think about in the morning when you wake up. You know, everybody's talking about it. The Scottish Government has committed to designate 10% of the seas around Scotland as highly protected marine areas by 2026. That would ban all forms of fishing within these areas to allow marine ecosystems to recover. Douglas Churnside dies for scallops in the Sound of Jura, but his future is far from certain. If the HPMA was put in place around the Sound of Jura, what impact would that have on you? It would finish me. It would finish what I do, which is probably one of the most sustainable types of fisheries, is hand dive scallops. And the boat behind me, you can see how small it is. So it's got a limited range, uh, and it's also not able to go out in all weathers. So I couldn't do the job. Precise locations are still to be decided, but ministers have said the measures will not be imposed on communities that do not want them. Does that offer you any kind of reassurance? Not really, not really, because it's one thing listening, but if you don't understand the issues, how can you have an opinion, an informed opinion? And you can take the dry science, but if you haven't got the sort of anecdotal evidence on the ground of how people live, you, you, you're going to make a lot of mistakes and it's not going to fit anybody's future. It could be on the east coast, the north coast, the west coast. We really don't know. And it's that uncertainty that just, for your mental health, as well as for trying to run a business and an operation, there'll be people cancelling orders for boats as well as people buying boats, but just to try and preempt what might happen. It's no way to run a business. It's unfair to think that people can sit and wait until 2026 with no idea what their future is. It's just not acceptable. This is an emotional issue for coastal and island communities across Scotland. They feel that their way of life is under threat and that their local economies could be damaged beyond repair. There's no fuel or oils in the boat at all. In a shed close to the shore, Hans has almost completed the conversion of his boat from diesel to electric. It's a major investment of his time and savings to create a greener business. He is the fifth generation of his family to fish in these waters, but he fears these proposals will make him the last. I'm in a position where I can produce a protein food source with zero carbon and produce it locally. And that is under threat, and you would think that's what the, we should be trying to protect. So I'm not saying don't conserve the ocean, don't look after the ocean, don't look after the biodiversity, it, it's control it. Like an HPMA is like putting a plaster on a giant wound. To have that area closed off would, would, would shut me down. I'd have to sell the boat, I wouldn't have an option. Every afternoon, these boats land their catch at the pier. These prawns will end up on dinner plates in France and Spain. Do you accept, though, that something has to be done to preserve fish stocks? There is controls in place already, but, um, you know, I think rather than just having this kind of blanket approach to the whole thing, it just it could be looked at a lot better. And what would it mean to Tevi Alec to, to lose fishing? I mean, there's six, six guys there working in these boats. And they've all got family. You know, if that was all to come to a stop, it's, a, it's got a knock-on effect. It's not, it doesn't just stop here. You know, it's the guy in the van that you've seen, he wouldn't have a job. You know, the people that pack all the stuff at the factory, they'd all be put out of a job. Fuel, engineers, it's a huge, huge chain of folk behind it. It doesn't just stop at the boat. Part of that chain is here in Tarbert. At this processors, they pack shellfish caught in creels up and down the west coast of Scotland. 
for us is too much in the one go. You know, it's going to do, decimate communities. You know, young boys that look forward to coming into this industry probably wouldn't get into the industry or come into the industry because they wouldn't know what the future holds for. We're built on fishing, this tar alone is, and it would just have a massive impact. It would, yeah. There has to be a compromise with the government, with the fishermen, with everybody. You know, they need to sit around the table and not just say, well, this is what's happening. Not one with the ocean with nature. The issue has inspired the band Skippinish to release this protest song. They believe HPMAs are the biggest peacetime risk to their communities since the Highland clearances. But campaigners insist urgent and drastic action is needed to preserve fishing for future generations. We need to take action, not only to allow for our um, key habitats to recover and to maintain the abundance and diversity of our seas, but also to actually ensure that livelihoods that depend upon our seas can continue long term. One of the key solutions is to have a wider plan for spatial management in our seas. Spatial management can basically look like specific zones for specific sectors to operate in and have the assurance that they can operate there. So free lonely zones, for example, and for low impact fishers to potentially even benefit the most from the recovery that can come from HPMAs. But it has to be done in the right way with a wider plan as well and also with the communities on board co-designing that process. HPMAs are a key part of the power sharing deal between the SNP and Scottish Greens, but the measures are also facing opposition from former cabinet ministers. That is what the people of Scotland, who have great affection for our fishermen, want to happen. Well, I always understood that this was uh, an approach, it was an, a policy that was likely to elicit a wide range of views, and that's one of the reasons why I very actively decided to consult so broadly and so deeply and right at the beginning of the process. What fishing communities have you visited to speak to them? Well, I, I visit communities all of the time. I've recently been in, in Orkney uh, and I've been in the Highlands as well. I've also met with a round table of MSPs from every party. I took every question that was put to me. They were put to me on behalf of their constituents uh, and I'm committed to getting out into the communities over the next couple of months to hear directly. Is it fair for these fishermen though to have this uncertainty over whether they will have a livelihood to have that hanging over their heads for the next three years? No, I don't want anyone to have that kind of uncertainty. Our fishing communities have been through quite enough of that recently with the impact of Brexit. That's why I have committed uh, to MSP colleagues, committed in the chamber, to doing that work on analysing the consultation and to responding to it as quickly as I but can. But when will they know where these HPMAs will be? We're not yet at a position to say that. I think the first day out in a fishing boat was eight years old. For now, these fishermen feel a long way from a process that could determine their future and the survival of coastal communities across Scotland. I honestly don't know what I would do. I really don't know what I'd do. Fishing's all I've done. That's all I've done. So, sad times. People are worried about losing their identity, you know, their self-worth. Once you've worked on the sea and it's not just a silvery film and you've dived below it, you get a whole understanding for, for all the life that's down there and how it can sustain. Ultimately, what everyone's trying to aspire to is, is a sustainable living with local food and not, not any lots of air miles.